In this video, we're going to talk about ammeters and voltmeters. Now, if you want to measure the current in a circuit, you want to use an ammeter. And the symbol for that is an A in a circle. If you want to measure the voltage across the device, you need to use a voltmeter with the symbol V. So let's say if you have a resistor and you want to calculate the voltage across the resistor. You need to connect the voltmeter across the resistor. Now, if you want to calculate the current flowing in a circuit, you need to connect the ammeter in series with the resistor, if you want to calculate the current flowing through the resistor. So keep that in mind. With an ammeter, if you want to measure the current of a device, you need to connect it in series with such a device. And if you want to measure the voltage, you need to connect a voltmeter in parallel with such a device or across the device. Now when designing an ammeter, you want the internal resistance to be very, very low, ideally very close to zero, because you don't want the ammeter to affect the current flowing in the circuit, because that's going to defeat the purpose of measuring the current in the circuit. In the case of a voltmeter, you want the internal resistance to be very, very high, very close to infinity, so that the voltmeter doesn't decrease the voltage across the resistor to any significant extent. So you want the resistance to be, let's say, like 10 to the 7 uh, ohms, which is like 10 mega ohms or higher. Let's work on a problem that shows how a galvanometer can be used as an ammeter. Now this particular galvanometer has a full scale sensitivity of 200 microamps. So let's say if this is the display of the galvanometer. In the middle, it would have a reading of 0 microamps. At full deflection, it's going to be 200 microamps. And on the left side, negative 200 microamps if you reverse the polarity. Now what we want to do is we want to design an ammeter where it can read 0 to 10 amps. So this would be a current of 0, but instead of 200 microamps, this would represent a current of 10 amps. So how can we do that? So first you need a shunt resistor, and across that is the galvanometer, represented by the symbol G. So that's the shunt resistor, capital R. Lowercase r is the internal resistance of the galvanometer. So this picture combined represents the ammeter. And so the current that's being measured flows at this point. And the current that flows through the resistor r, we're going to call it ir. And then the current that flows through the galvanometer, we'll call it ig. So i is the sum of IR plus IG. Now the maximum current that the galvanometer can accept at full deflection is 200 microamps. So that's equal to IG. And when it receives that amount of current, we need to relate that when the current I is equal to 10 amps. So when the ammeter receives 10 amps, we only want 200 microamps to flow through the galvanometer. The rest of the current has to flow through the resistor. So the majority of the current will flow there. So IR is the difference between I and IG. Now notice that IG is very small. So IR is approximately equal to the current that flows through the ammeter as a whole. So what are we looking for in this problem? What do we need to find? We have the internal resistance, so lowercase r is 10 ohms. The only thing we need is to calculate the value of the shunt resistor, r. Because once we have the right resistor, then automatically it's just going to work. So how can we calculate the value of r that we need? Notice that the galvanometer is in parallel with this resistor. 
And so the voltage across the galvanometer, let's say between points A and B, is the same as the voltage across the resistor. So we can say that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the voltage across the galvanometer. Now we know that V is equal to IR. So the voltage across the resistor is the current that flows through the resistor times the resistor itself. Now the voltage across the galvanometer is the current that flows through the galvanometer times the internal resistance of the galvanometer. Now the only currents that we have is the current that's being measured and the current that flows through the galvanometer. So it makes sense to replace IR with I minus IG. So here's the main formula. The current that flows through the ammeter minus the current that flows through the galvanometer, that's IR, times R, that's equal to IG times lowercase r. So now that we have the formula that we need, let's calculate the shunt resistance. So we know that I is equal to 1 amp, actually 10 amps. And then IG is 200 microamps. And this is going to be times R. Let's get rid of this. And then this is equal to IG, which is 200 microamps, times the internal resistance of 10 ohms. So micro is 10 to the minus 6. So this becomes 200 times 10 to the minus 6. So on the left side, 10 minus 200 times 10 to the minus 6, that's 9.9998. On the right side, 200 times 10 to negative 6 times 10, that's 0 0.00. 2 ohms. And then, so now we just got to take 0 0.002 divided by 9.9998. You could make this 10 if you want. So the answer is going to be about 2 times 10 to the negative 4 ohms. So that's the shunt resistance that is needed to be in parallel with the galvanometer. And as we said in the beginning, the resistance of an ammeter ideally has to be very low. We said approximately close to zero. And for this one, this is 0 0.0002. It's close to zero, but it's not exactly zero. So the shunt resistance has to be very, very low in order for this to work. Number two, design a voltmeter that can read 100 volts at full scale using a galvanometer with a full scale sensitivity of 20 microamps and with an internal resistance of 50 ohms. Now, in the last example, we saw that an ammeter can be made from a galvanometer if the galvanometer is in parallel with a shunt resistor. Now, to make a voltmeter, the shunt resistor has to be in series with the galvanometer. So we're going to have a circuit that looks like this. So this is the shunt resistor. And this is the internal resistance of the galvanometer. So in blue, we have the galvanometer. And combined, this whole device makes the voltmeter, which is represented by this symbol. So the voltage across the voltmeter is the potential difference at these two points. That voltage is equal to the current that flows through the circuit. So that's the current going through the galvanometer, which at full scale has to be 20 microamps. So we know V equals IR, and these two resistors are in series. So the total resistance is the sum of the shunt resistor and the internal resistance. Now, because this value is going to be so small compared to this value, we can say that R plus R is approximately capital R. But I'm going to use the exact equation for this problem. Now, in this problem, we want the voltmeter to read 100 volts when a current of 20 microamps passes through it. 
So let's replace V with 100, and let's replace the current with 20 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. And lowercase r, that's the internal resistance of 50 ohms. So first, let's divide 100 by 20 times 10 to the minus 6. And so that's going to equal 5 million. And so that's r plus 50. If we take 5 million and subtract it by 50, the exact value of r is going to be 4,999,950. Now, when selecting a resistor under practical circumstances, you're not going to find in a resistor that is 4,999,950. Instead, you're going to have to use a 5 mega ohm resistor. So now you know how to calculate the shunt resistor to turn a galvanometer into an ammeter or a voltmeter. So just keep this in mind. To turn a galvanometer into an ammeter, the galvanometer has to be parallel to the shunt resistor. And to calculate the shunt resistor, it's going to be the current that flows through the galvanometer times the internal resistance divided by the current that flows in the circuit minus the current flowing through the galvanometer. So that's how you can calculate it. And for the voltmeter, just remember that the shunt resistor has to be in series with the galvanometer. And so to calculate the resistance, it's going to be the voltage across these two points, that is across point A and B, divided by the current that flows through it and then minus the internal resistance. But chances are you could ignore this R value, but I'm going to put it there. So that's how you can calculate the shunt resistor for a voltmeter.